Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hello, my name is Nikki, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys this Halloween look. I'm so happy um, to be doing this look. I have been, this is actually what I'm going to be for Halloween, like the day of. I'm going to be a Playboy Bunny, but I didn't want to be like a basic Playboy Bunny. I really wanted to do it 60s inspired, so the makeup today works if you were going to do a Playboy Bunny from the 60s, or if you just want to do any old... 60s makeup. I found a, a ton of pictures and I really tried to incorporate every little thing that I found and that's why my hair looks like this and all of that. I'm wearing a silk corset. I talk a little bit about my costume later in the video but it's not like something that um, you guys can just go out and purchase because it's kind of like stuff I've made and purchased like randomly over the time. It's not like a full costume. So yeah, um, this is really just focused on the makeup today. So yeah guys, I have done tons of research. I really hope you enjoy this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you are not yet subscribed to my channel. I hope you guys enjoy this look and a happy Halloween to all you guys. Happy Halloween weekend if that's what you're celebrating. And let's just go ahead and get into this 60s inspired glam. Okay guys, so we are starting fresh face today. I do have, well not really fresh face, normally I start more fresh more fresh faced than this um but i do have the top of my forehead done and my brows just to get them out of the way especially with a look like this where like everybody does something differently i feel like it was literally my boobs you can <laughs> um i felt like it was better to just get them out of the way because everybody does their brows differently and also if you want to recreate this look in the 60s i know they did more like rounder brows and my brows kind of have this like strict arch situation happening so I didn't really want to make it like you know like to you guys can do whatever you want with your brows if you want to make it super authentic and super 60s then go ahead and do that but like my brows would not give I actually tried it on this brow before and had to like wipe it all off so um definitely like if you're gonna do something like this practice maybe beforehand or just really like take your time the day of Halloween so the first thing I'm gonna do is go in with my one heck of a blot primer I have always really loved this primer. It's really, really nice for kind of filling in your pores just a little bit. It's not so like pore filling, but more than anything else, I've always loved this primer for um, oil control as well. So I love that my nails like match this outfit a little bit. They will the day of Halloween as well. I really wanted to get this video up sooner for you guys, but you know, time doesn't always allow for that. So I'm trying my best here. So next I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. Hydrating Face Primer. I will say that this is not my favorite primer. I always go in with primer. Like, I never skip it. Um, this one's not my favorite, but I'm using it today because I want to fill it up. I will say it's not my favorite. Applying it has a very silicone texture, but once it's on, I can't really, like, say I hate it or love it or anything. So it's just, like, there. But I just did one pump of this. It is like really smoothing and almost mattifying even though it says hydrating. So the next thing I'm going to do is go straight in with foundation. If you are making, if you're doing this look on Halloween, which obviously like if you're watching this video, you probably um, are looking into Halloween makeup. Whatever um, like makeup look you do, just make sure you go with primers that are really going to help your makeup last, especially if you're going to like a party or you're going to wear your makeup for a long time. That's like my only disclaimer here. Um, normally I would go in with like a primer water this one is the wet and wild coconut scent one it is a three in one situation so it's like a prep set and refresh situation the prep is obviously the primer portion so i love stuff like this also i just wanted to touch on it real quick the um very basic clear gloss that i have on my lips is the pout bomb plumping lip gloss from makeup revolution so i really really love this i love the packaging i love this big freaking chunky applicator like i know this is so random but um that's just like the clear gloss i have on now so i will talk very quickly about two of my favorite foundations this is the maybelline um fit me matte and poreless in the shade 220 um this is not the packaging that it comes in it comes in packaging that looks like 
this right here if you want to pick it up at the store I'm sure a lot of people have seen this foundation before but um, I'm also gonna mix it with the Maybelline let's see, super stay foundation I just really like both of these foundations so um, they're both matte and that's something that I'm looking for specifically for this look um, because I'm going so I'm actually mixing it on the lid but there are different consistencies but they're both matte and something that was really important to me when I was looking into what I was gonna, what products I was going to choose for this look is that they were both matte or whatever products I'm using are matte. If you have really dry skin and you don't like matte products, like use a dewier foundation than this if that's what you really want to do. The Maybelline Fit Me is more dewy than this one in my opinion, the Superstay one. So we're just going to go ahead and pounce this in. I really want a flawless base. So we have a nice base going here. Next, I'm going to go in with some concealer. If you have a Tarte Shape Tape, Tarte Shape Tape, Tarte Shape Tape is an amazing um, concealer. I would totally go in with it for this look. However, there are so many concealers at the drugstore that are really good. I personally really love the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. This one, I have pretty much used it in like, all of my recent makeup videos. So if you've seen me use it a ton, this is it. This is in the shade Medium Peach. Holy cow, this is really light. I really like to mix my concealer shades because I have darker and lighter concealers. This one's pretty fair, so I'm going to mix the same concealer, but this one's in the shade Tan Sand. So right at this step, I love to get out my powder. So I use a powder puff. This is actually, like, in my opinion, kind of vintage. I don't know that many people that use powder puffs anymore. Um, but yeah, so you can get these at beauty supply stores. Mine's kind of dirty right now. Um, but you can also get them at Walmart, etc. This one I, is my favorite one. I got it at a beauty supply store and it's super, super soft. So next I'm going to go in with the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. This is a phenomenal loose powder. So many people love this powder. And it's just really full coverage and good. So I'm going to blend out my under eyes and then bake and I will be right back. Okay, so I have patted this powder into my under eye. I do not like to let this powder sit super long because it can be drying, especially if you're using a ton of like mattifying products. So what I'm going to do is actually, this is the brush I've been using for powder, like pressed powders and stuff. And I like to just press like regular like pressed powders into my skin. And so I'm going to take the same, like, technique of pressing powder in um, that I have on my under eye so that it doesn't sit there long, but that it gets set. If you have a ton of, like, skin, I don't want to say issues, but, like, if you have lots of things that you feel like you need to cover up and a foundation isn't cutting it for you, go in with a pressed compact powder foundation. Also, I love going in with a pressed powder um, if I'm going in, like, going to go out all night and like I really want my makeup to last a long time I'll go with a pressed powder this one is the Maybelline better skin powder in the shade classic ivory next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bronze I'm gonna go in I've been loving this bronzer by the way this is the Maybelline city bronzer in the shade 200 and just going to bronze I'm not gonna be overly bronzy um, at least if I'm gonna keep it like more authentic I don't want this look to be overly bronzy. Of course, if that's your vibe, which it totally is not my vibe, I love super bronzy skin, um, and you don't care about being super authentic, go in with some heavy bronzer if that's what you like. I'm just telling you guys. I was like looking at photos of trends from the 60s, and for sure, like, super bronzy skin was not it. Um, from what I saw so I'm just gonna go with this bronzer. It is a matte bronzer It's like got like a little bit of a satinness to it, but it's not like glittery or sparkly or anything along those lines So you could use this to contour your nose My favorite nose contour like powder is the butter bronzer in the original bronzer shade This is like what my skin color is like. I do not have any self tan on right now um, I self tanned a while ago and it pretty much is all gone now so um, if you're a similar shade to me, I find that this is like just like pale enough and warm enough and I find that it's just like the right color combination to really contour my nose and make it look smooth. Also, this butter bronzer has like literally that really buttery finish, which I find is really, really good for contouring my nose because it's not so much of a dry formula and I feel like I can really get away with packing on a lot of product and it not like taking off anything underneath. Next, I'm going to go in with my Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush. This one is in the shade Mellow Wine. Again, it is a matte blush formula, um, which 
is really what I'm going for on a look like this. I love to bring my blush up a little high. You can see I'm like dragging it up a little, but I also like to apply like the most of it in stippling motions on to my cheek and then like drag it upwards. Because um, the trend was never really like highlight in the 60s, I'm gonna go in with my Pure Nude Essence Highlighter. This is number one, very, very affordable, and you can see that it is a little bit sheeny, but it's not quite highlighty. So it doesn't have any glitter or anything like that. All I'm gonna do is just like tap the slightest bit of this on the center of my nose right there and on the bridge of my nose. Part of the reason I'm going in with this is because this is one of the only products that I have as a highlighter that doesn't quite highlight. And I still like to bring light to certain areas of my face. So I'm actually gonna do one eye off camera, make sure that I can perfect it for you guys and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I'm actually very impressed with myself. I have always thought I could never like pull this look off like this full cut crease thing and this is my first time doing it for my channel and obviously it's not perfect but I kind of wanted it to be this way um I think the next day will be better because I like already have experienced some things so I'm going to prime my eye using the wet n wild photo focus concealer I'm using the shade light honey honey something como se llama light honey um, I love this shade because I find that I like I didn't put anything on my brow bone, but you see how light it is. So it really makes a difference um, when I like actually am finished with my makeup. I find that not only does it make my eyebrows look cleaner, but then it like leaves this really nice white canvas, and I don't have to like go back and highlight my brow bone. So I'm also going to pack this on any areas I feel like I need to prime. So today we're going to be using an OG palette and it I chose it because it has shades that are cool toned enough for this look. Warm tones, those like really warm, rich, brown, buttery, like, hang on. For example, shades like this was not what I have been seeing in the photos of the 60s and everything was very matte. So that's why I went with this palette. I know that there's really only like literally two matte shades in here. However, this black right here has a matte base and then like a few sparkles throughout it and you lose the sparkles if you blend. So just a disclaimer there. And I felt like a lot of people probably had this palette and could recreate this look. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The first brush I'm going to go in with is actually one from Profusion, like it came in a Profusion palette. However, it is just a dense, like, blending brush. It is, like, big enough to pack shades into the crease, but it's dense enough to create very fine lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in with the shade Naked right here. Love this shade for this, and I thought it was just perfect. So I'm going to start... If your eyes are like mine, where you actually have hooded eyes... Um, start way higher than your crease. I started in my crease here and then I regretted it because I realized that I had to like go back and fix stuff. So I'm putting this way higher than my crease because when I cut my crease, I actually want all of these colors to be seen. I don't want to lose it. So I'm going in windshield wiper motions, bringing this all the way, like you see, I'm bringing it all the way to this inner part of my eye. And it's okay to work in sections and like build the inner part up if you want. And then I haven't put any product out here, but I'm going to start packing product on the outer part of my eye, like outer part of my crease as well. And my eyebrows go pretty far down. So what I'm going to do is just kind of swoop right under the tail of my eyebrow. And I let it fade here. It's not so intense. Um, but just like pack it on and then just like flick your brush out a little and it's very subtle but you can see it and it does create that dimension and that like very cat eye-esque look 
that cut crease look that was super popular in the 60s. The next shade I'm going to go in with, similar brush. This one, if you guys do not have a brush like the one I'm talking about, like the ones I'm talking about, this is very similar as well. This is from Wet n Wild. I found this at the Dollar Tree and they have two. So they have one that's like this and they have one that is much more fluffy. So you want to make sure to get one that looks, it looks a little more dense. And then I'm going to go in with the shade Buck. This shade, I used to use this palette all the time and think it was super warm. And now I'm like, this is a cool tone look. Like, excuse me while I cringe. Because I never do cool tone looks on my channel. But, you know, here we are. So, packing this shade buck on as well. I'm just not taking it up quite as high and not dusting it as far out here. Like, does that not look like a gray shade to you? I really feel like ugh, the evolution of eyeshadows since I started makeup has definitely changed. This is one of my first like high-end palettes for sure. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back in with the first brush and diffuse the shade Buck. If you need to pick up more product, this is the step to do it. Like the shade um, Naked, like if you need to go back into it, go ahead and do it. I'm going to pick up some right here for this little section. If you have done one eye and you feel like it's not perfect, like just go back into the other eye and, you know, do your best to fix it. Next, I'm going to take the Morphe M506 brush. This brush is so famous. It is just basically a really tiny little fluffy brush. And I'm going to go in with the shade Creep. It is the black in the palette that I was talking about. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm literally dipping my brush in like the smallest amount. And by the way, when I go in with black eyes, I go in super, super controlled. And like, this is very, very little. Um, like I barely tap my brush in. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is just make sure that this is all blended really, really well. Um, that's like the key thing. I don't want any splotchiness or anything. So next I'm going to go back in with that concealer, but this is really important. So I didn't do this on this eye at first, and then I realized that because I have hooded eyes, I lost the cut crease that I had done. So if you can look at my eye, even with my lashes, you can see that my natural crease is really way down here. But I have made my eye look so much bigger because I have made myself a false crease way up here. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So I'm basically lining my eye really messy with this concealer like literally putting a line of it there you could do that with a brush if the applicator doesn't allow you to do it what i'm going to do is I'm gonna, and i've talked about this a lot in other videos but what i'm going to do is i'm going to look up and then roll my eyes super dramatically and you see that crisp line right there that is the line you're going to work off of so you're going to pick up the excess product that you lay down on the bottom and you're going to start patting it upwards and blending that out you might have to pick up more product i'm having to pick up more product right now so cut product as you need but definitely don't go in super heavy right off the bat because you don't want to have too much product and then not know what to do with it by the way the brush that i'm using to this is the ulta beauty flat concealer brush it is just a really like really really flat brush and i find that it is just perfect for when i do looks like this when I get to the top, I like to try to do a padding motion and like swiping very little so that I get the exact look that I'm going for. Obviously, this is only the beginning of my eye. So when I get to this part right here, I'm like having to kind of just create it. So I put my brush right where that cut crease ends and I just swoop my brush outwards in the shape that I was kind of creating but lower down. And then down here, I'm just going to pat out that concealer. Make sure it is a nice, smooth canvas for the anything else I'm going to go in with. So next, I'm going to take the powder brush I was using. And I'm actually going to go back in with my powder. I didn't do it on this eye, and I kind of regret not doing it. So I'm just going to pack on some powder here and make sure that that looks really blended together. Then the next thing I'm going to do is take the shade Virgin in this palette. It is... A really really white shade it has a little bit of sheen to it very similar to the essence pure nude highlighter if you don't have this palette and you just have like very matte basic eyeshadows to work with 
this will do the same thing. This is Essence is a very, very, very affordable brand. So if you guys want to pull this look off and you don't have any, you don't have this palette, you can totally do that. So yeah, I'm going to go in with this shade, Virgin. Oh, that is the wrong brush. Also, guys, if you are a beginner at makeup, get buy some washcloths and keep them at your station. Or if you're, you know, doing this look for Halloween, keep one of these. I promise it'll make your experience so much easier because what I'm doing is basically using it as a color switch and making sure to get off the color version off the brush that I was using for something completely different. So I'm going to go actually with the brush that I am intended to. This is the same brush that I used to highlight my nose and I'm going to use the color version to highlight my inner corner and I'm going to use this to pack the shade version on to my lid. You can use a different brush. This is just honestly the one I'm choosing to use. I love this brush in particular. It is also from Wet n Wild. You can get it at the Dollar Tree. Um, I just washed it, so I'm going to go in with that and show you guys the... This is really good when you get to the crease area. You want to pack that shade on up there. So, the next thing I'm going to do is go in with some eyeliner. And you can see I got a pretty fierce wing here. And I actually achieved that using the Makeup Revolution eyeliner. This is like their... I don't know. This is like the only eyeliner that they have. It's like a felt tip eyeliner. They actually sent this to me in a giveaway that I won. And oh boy. Like, I've never been able to get this sharp of a wing with a felt tip liner. So I always like tap my felt tip liners a little bit. This one obviously is brand new. And I'm going to kind of follow the same line that this, like, is this top crease is kind of going off of. So I'm going to start at the base of my eye. And flick it upwards, getting very, very delicate towards the end here. I'm using literally, like, the very, very, very finest part of this eyeliner. And going in just for the end right there. And then kind of when I get this outline, I start going into the beginning. And you do want it to get thicker here in the middle because you want it to look rounded and then flick outwards, just like the top part of your eye. If you have trouble getting your eyelashes coated in black, just pat it on if you're using a felt tip liner. I They sent this to me and I honestly would go out and purchase this eyeliner with my own money. I have never used a felt tip eyeliner this good, you guys. So next I'm going to go in with some mascara. This is the Ellen Essence Volume Stylus 18 Hour Wear Mascara. I have been loving this mascara recently. I, it, it, I was like obsessed with it when I first got it and then I put it down and wasn't super obsessed. But here we are again being really obsessed with it. So like literally I think this mascara is less than $5. It is so affordable. It is, let's see. Made in Luxembourg, not made in China. Um, literally one of their best lashes. Essence has incredible mascaras. So, obviously, again, if you want this look to be more authentic and you have nice enough, long enough lashes, don't go in with mascara if it's not your choice. I love showing you guys the comparison of my eyes with and without lashes. So here is obviously with lashes and here is with not without lashes. Honestly, I could layer this up and continue to get a really, really full look up for my lashes. But I am just a huge fan of lashes. So the ones I'm going to use today and whatever lashes you use for this look in particular, make sure that they, sure that they flare out like this where they get bigger on the outside. It's really going to lift your eye and give it that more cat eye effect. Real quick, I'm going to tell you guys where I got these lashes. They are the Ioni 3D Foaming Lashes. These are cruelty-free vegan foaming lashes. Um, these are the XL 2XL Wispy Dramatic Lashes. I got these at the Dollar Tree. I can't find them on their website. I, I'm kind of desperate about it, but... If you see them in your local Dollar Tree, pick them up. They have other styles, but look how beautiful this lash is. So now you have really full, wispy lashes that extend your eye shape and go really nicely with this cat eye. Oh, I forgot something on the eyes. So I did take this mascara. It gets kind of clumpy, so I just make sure to wipe off the excess product. If you're going to use this one, I don't know what happened to mine. Maybe my stopper's broken, but yeah. 
So I'm very quickly going to do my lower lash line. And I'm not putting any color under my lower lash line because even in the 60s, they would put like eyeliner and um, make these little faux, um, line, like these little lines that would be like faux eyelashes or fake eyelashes basically, but they were just little lines. I'm not going to do that though. I think that that could lead to this like running or something. So I'm just going to make sure that my lower lashes are very black and I'm going to actually put more mascara than I normally would put on my lower lashes. The next thing I'm going to do is go in with a white eyeliner. This is the LA Girl eyeliner in the shade Whiten. It is their Glide Gel Liner. And um, let's get right into the lips. So everything I saw was like a very nude, very, very nude. And I think that it's just me being a Latina and having this skin color, this eye color, this hair color, it's not going to work for me. I'm going to go in with the shade Bare, which is like a pretty nude shade for me from LA Girl. These are amazing eyeliners. This is their perfect precision eyeliner. Sorry, lip liners. And I'm just going to line my lips. Okay, so this is actually like the perfect color for my lips, I feel like. This is MAC Velvet Teddy. Mm, that kind of works. It's a little pink, though. But I actually think it really works for this. Um, I also really love this one. This is a little bit more pink and a little bit more nude. This is the shade Nude Cream in the number 26 from Milani Cosmetics. It is like a little bit of a glossier consistency. So I think that actually works really well for this look. It's not something that I would normally pull for, but as I said, um, I'm not really doing my makeup the way that I love to do my makeup in particular, but... So the next thing I'm going to do is go in with this Wet n Wild Coconut Spray, spray my face, and um, just kind of set it. Okay, babe, so this is the finished look. I did not film a tutorial on my hair because I'm not a hair stylist, and this honestly seemed a little bit difficult. Um, you can totally get hair inspo, um, but basically my hair is very dark, and I thought it would be very hard for me to show you guys how I even did this. And it's not perfect, but I have... I'm actually going to take the ears off so you guys can see. I have that very like classic 60s bump situation going on and I actually split my hair in two and um, I split my hair down the middle here I curled it I would have my hair more curled than this but I had my hair straight so the struggle is real guys I'm like doing my best for you guys I'm sorry my like boobs are all in your face I'm wearing a corset because Playboy Bunnies wore like corset style um, tops so I just ordered this off of eBay and same with the ears um, of course you can go to like Party City or whatever but I ordered all this stuff way in advance um, I bent the ear it didn't come this way and I'm putting it right at the part like the end of this little part right here so yeah um, also just like Google like 60s inspo if you want to find some more stuff um, oh I, I saw one girl who had like a mole and I actually think I might do that real quick Ooh. so I'm gonna take this LA Girl Precision Liner in the shade of brown. I actually have some little moles on my, they're not moles, they're like those little, you know, they're like those little freckles. I have a few here that you can like see through my foundation actually. Um, but I'm actually, this is a natural one. You can barely see it, I'm sure. So I actually just decided to accentuate my natural mole and then what I'm going to do is that same powder brush I was using before, I'm just going to pat over it. Obviously do with that what you will. I just saw a girl do it in a photo and um, you could make it more prominent or less but I thought this was really natural to have it there like that. So um, yeah guys, happy Halloween, happy whatever your costume is going to be, I'm sure it's going to be great. So I also have a Frida Kahlo look on my channel as well if you guys want to see that. I really love to do looks that obviously work for like my skin tone and what I look like. So I thought Frida was perfect. Um, so I will link that video down below as well if you guys need some more Halloween inspo. And um, yeah, I love you guys. Happy Halloween and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!